Hi, hi everybody, this is Osprey from MyChartCoach.com and in this video we're going to take a look at some of the stocks that were in play today. So first up is ticker symbol UWT. This is the uh, Velocity Shares 3 times long crude oil ETN here. So yeah, the uh, oil was up big today and, and uh, UWT was up 10%. So yeah, uh, call options were returning some big uh, percentage gains today. A as you can see here, it broke above that 50 day simple moving average. That's the green line at 34.50. That's the key level to hold. Right now, it's working on filling the gap between high of day on this candle and low of day on this candle. So a move up here just above 38 would fill the gap. That's the next big level to break is that 38 resistance zone. So uh, the, keep in mind, the top of the gap is always a tough level to break. If it does break above that top of the gap level, we'll be looking for a run back up to this 4150 level. Okay, so take a look at CLDC. There's been a lot of uh, China stocks running, even with the Shanghai composite hitting uh, uh, some very low levels right now. It's been under immense pressure. Uh, the, the China stocks uh, have been uh, running in the U.S. And so they've been going down the line and picking these uh, low volume stocks and, and as you can see today look at the average daily volume down here for CLDC hardly any volume th th this little uh, volume in the first week of June this is what we call the front load you have this long upper wick some people were, were taking positions before the big run today and, and today there was a breakout above all the moving averages above the 50 100 200 and 300 day simple moving averages the, the 300 day simple moving average at 326 is the key level to hold now that it's above that level it, you know if it pulls back you want to see that that level hold. When a stock's breaking out, the key is to look at the weekly chart to, to find the next resistance levels. And as you can see, it's breaking the gold line, which is the 100 week moving average at 455. That is the key level to close above for the week. If it drops below that 455 before uh, Friday, the candles could work their way back into the bands. You have EMA4 way down here at 302 and the 50-day simple moving average at 286. It's a bullish move above that 50-week moving average. As you can see, the last time it was above that level was back here in 2016. So every time the 50-week moving average has been tested, there's failed to be a close above. You could see back here in the first week of June, it traded above the 50-week moving average and pulled all the way back. That that could happen again here. Um, you know, the, the the this week's candle will not set until the closing bell on Friday. So it's going to be really important it closes above the green and gold lines. Okay, take a look at SPHS. Uh, big dead cap bounce here. Closed up 34%. Uh, th this had a, a really big pullback yesterday. And, and you can see here on Monday, the open was down here. It hit way down here in the 180s. And then it closed up here. That formed the hollow red candle. The, the candle yesterday was well below the lower Bollinger Band, which is way up here at 288. The candles will many times work their way back into the bands. It, it, it got back above the 200 or the 300, 200, and 100 day simple moving averages. And you can see the close is back in the Bollinger Bands. The candles always work back into the bands, either sideways or back up. And, and now it's hitting the key resistance levels to break. It has to get above the pink line, EMA4 at 310, and above the green line, the 50 day simple moving average at 317. When it hit EMA8 at 333, and failed to break that was the the profit taking zone so going forward it has to get above this 310 to 333 level to head higher fail to break resistance and, and fail to get above EMA4 and the downtrend could continue. It's all about getting above 310 right now. Okay, take a look at ACHV. Closed up 34% today. Another uh, a big big, uh, big move on huge volume. As you can see, there was a giant volume spike today. A black candle did form, so the open was up here around 550 and, and the close was down here at 510. So so there, there, you know, there, there was some uh, selling some shares today, it looks like. Uh, the, the, the big thing is the gap got filled here. There's a gap between low of day and this candle and high of day and this candle. So the key now is to stay above the top of the gap in that orange line, which is EMA 13 at 511. If that level holds, the next big levels to break are, are the middle Bollinger Band here at 635, the dotted purple line. And then there's a gap here between low of day and this candle and high of day and this candle. So you'd be looking for a break above the middle Bollinger Band in the gap fill. Okay, take a look at INNT. Closed up 11% today. Um, yeah, this has been on a very nice run. As you can see here, it's already on a five day run. You know, we alerted it yesterday on the break above the 50 and 100 day simple moving averages. So that was nice follow through today. Um, it, it's riding EMA4 at, at, at 1708. As long as that pink line's holding and it's staying above the green and gold lines, that's signaling more upside potential. Now the key level to break is this gap over here. There's a gap between the, uh, what is that, the uh, 18th and 19th of April. And, and so it's going to need to break this 24 to 25 resistance zone to head higher. As you can see, the upper wick 
on today's candle, hit that bottom of the gap resistance zone and pull back. If it fails to break resistance here, it could take a breather. Okay, take a look at DAC here. It closed up 16% today. It is trading higher in after hours trading or it did close higher in after hours trading. It, it, it's been on this nice run. Um, we did alert it when it was back here and it broke above this 300-day uh, simple moving average and it just continued pushing higher. Um, as you can see, the November high close level, uh, th there was a close above this 175. That was the high close from back in November. And so it needs to stay above that 175 level. That would be bullish. If it dropped back below 175, you want to see EMA4 at 165 hold. Really good volume right now. It has a good uptrend. It's currently trading above all the moving averages on the daily chart and riding EMA4 support higher. Um, the key Key now is on this weekly chart. So each candle on this chart represents one week of trading. And the key level to break now is this 100 week moving average at 193. As you can see here, you have to go off this chart. It's been years since there's been a close above the 100 week moving average. If there was a close above that level, that would be a very bullish change in trend. And if it held, it could break out higher. You can see back here in 2017, it got above the green line, which is the 50 week moving average, and that failed to hold and the downtrend continued. The close last week above the 50 week moving average was very bullish. If we can get another close above the 50-week moving average this week, that would be a bullish change in trend. It's been years since there's been two closes above the 50-week moving average. This is all signaling that the chart is really building strength. Right now, it's about getting above 193. A close above 193 for the week would be very bullish. Um, yeah, and, and look at the volume spike, uh, spike last week. You know that that's the load. You know there's some good volume. So we'll see if they can if it can follow through and the company can refrain from diluting and killing the rally. Okay, look at LEDS here. Closed up 22%. Um, yeah, th th this chart's heating up. You know, you've got RSI at 62, Fasto now above 80. You've got the bullish crossover on ADX with the green line crossing, crossing the red line to the upside. And so today there was a close above uh, a major uh, moving averages here. You know, there was a bounce off of the 300-day simple moving average, the blue line last week. And then today it got above the green, dotted purple, uh, or the, the red, green, gold, and dotted purple lines. It's above the 200. It's above all the moving averages. Okay, so, so it's above all the moving averages, and it busted above of that upper Bollinger Band. If it can head higher here, the, the high close, the, the close on May here is the big level to break between five seven four seventy five and five dollars. If it can get above that level, it might be able to run back up to that six dollar high close level from April. Um, it, you know, it, it's only a good play here if it can get above or stay above these moving averages. If it were drop, if it dropped back below four, that would be signal more consolidation. As you can see, it's been kind of in this sideways channel between uh, resistance up here in the four eighties and support down here in, in the three. Dollar three thirty range, and, and so it's going to have to break that four eighty resistance zone to, to head higher. Okay, let's look at TSRI. Closed up twenty nine percent today. Nice uh, follow through. It made a bullish move yesterday. It had closed above all the moving averages here, and, and, and so that was signaling more upside potential. And today it broke out higher. It did form this long upper wick on today's candle, so there was some profit taking, possibly some dilution off this nine forty resistance level. And when a stock's breaking out on the daily chart, you got to look at the weekly chart for the next resistance levels, and you could see here it came up and it hit this uh, June of 2017 close in, in the $8 range and it failed to stay above that level and pulled back. So going forward, if it fails to close above this $8 zone for the week, that would be a red flag. That would signal temporary top. This week's candle is busting through that upper Bollinger Band. So the candles could work back into the bands, similar to like each time that it got above, um, you know, the candles worked back in. And so that could happen again. You know, you can see over here all, all, all the examples. Um, um, you know, if it, 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 it's all going to be about breaking eight, it failed to break eight and drop below 720, and that would signal the top of the current bounce. Okay, take a look at AVGR here. Um, you know, this closed up 16%. The, the chart is heating up. It did form the black candle today, which we don't like to see because it means even though the stock was up on the day, it closed below the open. But but it did have a bullish close above this gold line. That's the 100-day simple moving average at 163. As you can see here, you have to go off this chart to find the last close above the the 100 day simple moving average so this this signals that the chart's heating up if it can stay above 163 that would be bullish you can see here the green line turned into support that's the 50 day simple moving average at 150 as long as it's holding there's more upside potential you can see the 100 day simple moving average and 50 day simple moving average are coming to a flex point and you have the 50 day ready to bullish cross over the 100 day simple moving average that's a signal that the chart is building strength nice volume spike today now the big level to break is this closing price here uh, on the 
23rd of May. If it can get above this 225 resistance zone, look for a run up to 254 gap fill. There's a gap from back here in February between low of day and this candle and high of day and this candle. So a run to 250 would fill the gap. It has to break 225 first. If it dropped below that 100 day simple moving average, that would signal it's not ready to go. Okay, look at AMRH. This chart's heating up. Closed up nearly 19% today. You know, it was looking better earlier in the day when we were talking about it in the chat because it was above this green line here. That's the 50 day simple moving average at 117. It needs to turn that level into support to get the, this uh, reversal going. Um, it, it, the big level to break after that is this gold line, the 100 day simple moving average at 156. It got above that level the first week of June, failed to stay above, and it had this really nasty pullback. Not looking good with this long upper wick and the close back below that 50 day simple moving average. But if it gets above 117 tomorrow, it could get moving, so keep an eye on it. Okay, take a look at OSN. This is a steel stock that that's uh, you know I'm not that familiar with. Um, you know uh, we cover a lot of steel stocks, but this is a, a, a penny stock that um, you know uh, is heating up here. Um, you, you know there's lots of uh, tariff news and and um, you know we're gonna see here if this can get a, a breakout going. Notice this uh, very long sideways channel um, bet for between February and June, and, and today there was a close above the top of the channel, which was the high close here in May. You could see how this level you know for for uh, multiple months has been a big resistance level it's been failing to close above every time it's tested look at all the times that this level has been tested today there was finally a close above and so if it can stay above it looks like around 310 or so this high close resistance level that's going to be a signal that it wants to break out higher now if it dropped back below and it dropped below three dollars that would be a red flag it needs to stay above and then now the big level to break is up here you know you've got this uh, resistance zone um, it, it, it basically, uh, you know, get above $4. And then, you know, if it can get above $4, then it could possibly keep working its way back up to the $6 level. That was the high close from back there in January. Anytime you have really uh, a tight sideways channel like this, and then the, check out how the Bollinger Bands, you have the upper Bollinger Band and lower Bollinger Band, how they get tight. And, and then you have a breakout to one direction. Um, that usually signals that it wants to head that, that, that you know, it's, it wants to continue that direction. Notice the upper Bollinger Band here is hooking up. You can see it's down, now it's hooking up, and the lower Bollinger Band's hooking down, and the candles are breaking out to the upside. That's usually when it signals it wants to head higher. We'll see if it can follow through here, and, and it, you know, if today uh, doesn't turn out to be a head fake. Okay, let's look at CEI here. Talk about head fakes. This is the king of head fakes. Okay, so whenever you get a chart like this, and and, and as you can see, this is the, the dotted purple line here is the middle Bollinger Band. It's also the 20-day simple moving average. And when, when candles keep failing to get above that level, Every time it gets tested, each month this level gets tested and it fails to break. And here we go again. Exact same thing freaking happened today. You know, a zebra has a hard time changing its stripes. And this zebra stripes are, are what they read is dilution. This is a big fat dilution zebra. That's what this chart's telling you is that they're dumping shares, dumping shares. Dumping shares again today. Dumping shares. You know, pull it back, pull it back, pull it back. You know, just unloading, unloading. Get a little rally going. Suck a bunch of new blood in. Dump the shares. Okay, so so in order for this to be a good play, it has to be above thirty cents. When when I see this type of pattern, you know, it, it's usually you know the safest way to go is just wait for that close above. You know, you want to be waiting until right before the closing bell. And if it if it, it and if it looks like it's going to close above for the day, then that's a signal. Okay, yeah, you might want to jump in this thing. But but if you're looking for a long trade and it's not closing above the the middle Bollinger Band, it's going to be a risk to hold. So instead of you know trying to catch the falling knife between 25 and 30 this might be the kind of stock that's better just to play above 30 if it's above 30 that would be a, a play that it could could possibly run to the 50-day simple moving average if it's trading below that's just signaling downside risk so we keep you know alerting this on the way down I hate doing that and, and it keeps failing to follow through um, you know it what happens is it's gonna get to a point here and they're gonna do a reverse split when you have bad financing like this and you have to keep selling shares to pay the bills it, you get to a point where there's where, where it gets too low and now they're running the risk of being delisted. You know, you can only be under a dollar for so long where you're going to get the delisting notice. Who knows? Maybe they want to go to the OTC, but if they want to stay on the big boards, they're going to have to do a reverse split soon if they don't get that share price moving higher. Okay, look at CVRS here. Closed up 17% on the day. So keep an eye on this one. Um, it caught my eye because it's hitting the, the green line. That's the 50-day simple moving average at 80. 
89. That that support level broke back here on the 16th of, of April. You know, when this this downtrend started, I mean, basically you could say it was really officially started on this candle right here when the middle Bollinger Band broke. And then when it got below the 50-day simple moving average, that was a major red flag. And so it's been working on getting it back above the middle Bollinger Band for the last couple of weeks. And, and then today, you know, it closed back above that level. So if it can stay above 78, that would be bullish. And then what you really want to, for this type of play, you, you're really waiting for that break above resistance, and that would be a signal to jump in. So if it broke above 89, it could get interesting and possibly run up to that 100-day simple moving average. There is an unfilled gap on the chart between low of day on this candle and high of day on this candle. And, and so what you'd be looking for on a break above that 50-day simple moving average is a run up to a dollar five and the gap fill. Now, keep in mind, it will not be a good setup if it fails to break that 50-day simple moving average. The, the, the bounce, you know, all the money's already been made between, you know, down here and, and up here if it fails to break resistance. You know, when you get the sideways channel, um, you know, you have to be, you know, loading off the bottom and selling at the top unless you want to wait for that break above resistance. Okay, let's look at CCCR. This is the uh, another China stock. Just wanted to throw this in there. It closed up 12% today. Keep an eye on it. You know, they've been running the, the, the China stocks and, and, you know, we've had several in the chat. I didn't put them in this video. I didn't want to fill it up with all these China stocks, but, you know, that, that there's been several that, that were alerted in the chat today that, that have been heating up and, and uh, running or whatever. And, and so we've got uh, in May, this 100-day simple moving average was hit and it failed to close above. Notice how, the, the, uh, you know, these last couple candlesticks have been trying to break that level. If you see CCR trading above 122, that'll be a signal that it's in play, but it would have to stay above that level. If it, if it broke above the 100-day simple moving average and you loaded on the break above, you would have to use that level as your stop loss level. You, you, you do not want to hold if it closes back below that 100-day simple moving average once it once it breaks above. As you can see here, the downside risk. You know, it's only this is only a good setup if it gets above the gold line. So keep an eye on it. Maybe it'll break above that 122 level tomorrow and get moving. Okay, thanks for reading this video. Please come check out the chat if you like this video and you like my uh, charts and information. It'd be great to see you uh, in the chat. Um, please check it out. Thank you.